Hey everybody, how we doing today? So today's video, we're gonna be comparing the Suzuki 2.5 horsepower four stroke outboards. New versus the old. And why 90% of the time you're gonna see me using the old one. Now these Suzuki 2.5s are pretty popular for a couple of different reasons. One is they're fairly lightweight, uh, coming in right around 29 pounds. That makes it fairly manageable to getting it from and to your vehicle, as well as mounting it on your paddle craft. Two, they are a four stroke motor, meaning just add gas. Uh, the actual motor contains the oil, unlike a two stroke where there is a pre-mix of oil and gas because that's how the motor is fueled as well as lubricated. So it tends to be more smoky, plus the kind of hassle of always having to do that mix. With the four strokes, just add gas and that's all you have to worry about. Third, the Suzuki's are very reliable, pretty much bulletproof. The motors themselves are a single cylinder, not much different than your lawnmower, go-kart, moped. So not real complicated, uh, not a lot of moving parts and not really any electronics to foul up either. Now price-wise for the new outboard, I paid roughly $750 out the door at my local authorized Suzuki dealership. Uh, for my older model, I bought it used off of Craigslist for $150. Uh, the prior owner had uh, run it aground onto some concrete blocks and it locked up the bottom end. Uh, he took it down to the dealership to get a price quote and they wanted roughly $400 to $450 to replace the bottom end. Uh, the motor still worked fine, it's just the, motor, the bottom end was locked up. I figured I could fix it, so I took the gamble, paid the 150, and it only cost me less than $50 to, uh, I was able to break it free, and then also just to replace the little clutch dog and uh, some bearings, and uh, it was up and running. I will say though that in the three plus years that I've been utilizing it a lot, uh, I've probably cycled the 750 it would have cost to buy a new one in parts for rebuilding the, the parts of the motor that broke, the lower end stuff that wore out, pieces that broke, fell off, and so forth. But I consider that kind of more average natural maintenance for a high use motor. And even this one, I've already invested a few dollars in repairs, so I think it's just kind of a balance there. All right, let's get into uh, the differences between the old and the new outboard. But first, the most important thing you have to do is identify what year you're talking about for each outboard. Now, the only way to do that is to go on and look on for the little nameplate here. It'll have the Suzuki brand, the model number, and a serial number. What you'll do is you'll take that serial number, go online to an authorized uh, Suzuki dealership, and they'll have a code range where that serial number will fit into, and that'll quantify which year that this outboard was actually made. Uh, the reason why that's important is not only to know what year the outboard is, but should you need to order parts for it, you're getting the right parts for that year of outboard. Now, cosmetically and design-wise, they're actually very similar. I'd be very hard-pressed to see much difference between the two, as you can see here, although this one being a bit uh, roughed up there. But uh, let's go check out a couple of key differences that I found. Now, the first difference, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but actually is a big improvement, is the gas cap. Uh, the newer one is considerably taller, making it a lot easier to grab. The older one, as you'll see, is shorter, and because it's recessed back in this ravine here, it's hard to grab onto it, and you only have your just the tips of your fingertips to try to force it off and on. Um, these gas caps are made to be watertight, so they're force-fitting, so you do have to put a little oomph into it, and trying to grab this thing is a lot harder than it is with this uh, taller, more convenient uh, lid there. Uh, it also has less threads, so it's easier to get on and off, but negatives, I have lost the vent, it had popped off, and uh, I had to buy a brand new cap. That kind of sucked because it's expensive. And this one, I've lost one because as I took it off, there's actually a little uh, wings that stay on the inside with a chain that is supposed to prevent it from coming out. Somehow those prongs just bounced perfectly, came out, and I dropped the cap, and the cap just went overboard. And uh, that was expensive as well, so take it as you wish there. 
Now the second one is actually a fairly significant change and that has to do with the fuel system slash carburetor. Uh, as you'll see here, this is the older one, pretty standard carburetor, air intake, spark plug, head, so forth. But if you take a look at the newer motor, you have this, uh, which they basically call a fuel pump. Now I don't think it's a mechanical fuel pump, I think it just works on vacuum. But what I think the principle is, is this one, the older one, the fuel just comes through and just kind of gets uh, vacuum sucked through the carburetor through the compression of the motor and it just goes directly in line. The newer one has this head on it which I guess they call the uh, fuel pump but I think it what happens is the fuel comes all the way up, fills this reservoir so when you're running the motor then you have gravity feed to the carburetor. So kind of like a forced induction but just using gravity not like a fuel injector or a mechanical carburetor. But that's a big difference. Uh, comparative to, I don't know if there's a design difference because they added this. The electronic module for the firing the spark plug is a little bit shaped different than this one. But I don't know if they do anything different in regards to spark or how strong and so forth. Uh, looking at the bolt, bolt layouts of like the heads and the um, block, they do match up. Uh, this one just has the added uh, bracket for this uh, fuel pump, but otherwise the layout looks pretty much similar. Same with the carburetor. So I think that's really the only significant difference. What's better? I don't know. I know this one is more finicky if it doesn't start right off the bat, and I think it's a fuel-related issue. Uh, so it's more sensitive that way where this one is like an old school Russian thing. It's just a chunk block and it just will always work no matter what you do to it because uh, such a basic system. Fuel tank directly into the carburetor without all of this extra gadgetry. Um, if they did this because of uh, California environmental standards, then I think it's probably a negative. But uh, once this thing fires and I know it's working, this is probably the long-term more reliable, um, considerable more horsepower, but that's because of age difference. And this one, I've overheated, I've destroyed it, I've had to tear it down, put it all back together from bare block all the way up. So it's very inefficient. Um, and like I said, this one's brand new, so what can you say? Now the next difference is probably the most important difference, to me at least, and for the fishing that I do. And that has to do with the propellers. Uh, you have the old style and then you have the new style. The difference being is the older style uses a standard standalone prop and it uses a little brass keyway as the uh, connecting device to the prop to the lower end. Um, it's also called a shear pin for the reason if your prop should actually hit some bottom or the rock or wood or whatever, instead of locking up and breaking your lower end, it'll snap this little uh, keyway and then it'll allow the propeller to just basically free spin and not damaging your lower end. Vice versa, the newer style uses a bushing style prop, a rubber bushing that's pressed into the propeller and that basically allows the force be driven to the lower end. However, if you, the same instance where you hit the bottom, hit a rock, hit a tree or whatnot, that bushing will basically, rubber will release itself and allow that uh, free spinning action, thereby disconnecting it from the lower end and not damaging it. The difference comes into play is, if I need to repair this one on the water, if I break off this shear pin, all I have to do is remove the cotter pin, pop off the propeller, take out the old keyway, put in the new key, put the prop back on, put the cotter pin back on, and I'm up and running again. For the newer style, because the bushing is pressed onto the propeller, one, getting this nut off is very difficult. You take off the cotter pin, you need, I believe it's like a 19 millimeter wrench, and a lot of force, because you also need something to block off the prop from spinning, and then you need a lot of force to break this nut loose, because it's on there very strong. Then you, the only way to fix it is, putting on a new propeller. So you have to carry that big 19 millimeter wrench, you need something to take off the cotter pin, you need something to block off this prop to keep it from spinning when you're trying to break off the nut, and you need to have an expensive $150 propeller on you standby in order to replace it. Then it's just pop off, pop on, nut, force it back on, cotter pin, and you're back up. 
but that's a lot of extra money and a lot of extra stuff tools wise that I have to carry on board versus this where all I need is the pliers to get the cotter pin off. So when I'm going off to the back country or the flats, I'm choosing this one because almost virtually every trip I'm hitting the bottom and breaking off these pins because of the hard bottom in the back country and on the flats. So that's why I do not take my new motor to the back country unless this one's totally dead and just reserve that for the offshore trips because you have less chance that you're gonna run into something that's gonna break that uh, prop bushing. So that's a big difference there. And if you ask the chickens, they prefer the old style five to one versus the new one. Okay, so those are the key differences that I've kind of just found by utilizing the old and the new. Uh, I haven't gone into the actual motors to see if there's any metallurgy differences or specific design changes, but those are the key ones. Uh, doing a little bit of research, I found that the kind of the point break is between 2011 and older is pretty much the same as my old one. And that change at 2012 and newer is when all those design changes came on board. So 2012 to 2019 will pretty much be this motor. 2011 down to 2006 when they first developed these was basically gonna be this motor. So if you go out and you find a used one, find that you like the newer style, look for 2012 and newer. Uh, if you like the older style design because the way I like them, look for 2011 and older. And just remember, you have to go by strictly by the serial number on that side nameplate, and then just go on any of the uh, Suzuki parts websites, and they'll all have that uh, listing where you can identify what specific motor that you have. So hopefully that helped out somebody that was interested in these style of motors. Maybe get your uh, paddle craft moving on plane. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching and I will see you next video. Bye.